I want her to come back home and I miss her and I love her. And we want her to come back now. Me and my brother be thinking about it and we be crying. And we want her to come back home so much. For somebody, child, to be missing that law and to see her get in this man's car and never see her no more. This is so devastating. Those were the children of missing person Kiera Stubbs. She's been missing for five years now. Local authorities and her family are looking for the person out there that has the missing piece to this puzzle. Can we possibly help them find the answers that they're looking for? It's time to turn on the searchlight. Hey everyone, John Lorden here. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. Just a quick reminder, there will be no episode of Brain Scratch released on Friday of this week. I'm taking the time off to celebrate the 4th with my friends and family. I hope that you have the same opportunity. But today's case, Kiara Stubbs. This is a family that hasn't been able to celebrate the 4th or any holidays with their missing loved one for five years at this point, including her two children. Is there something that we can do to help them find the answers they're looking for and maybe even find Kiara? Let's learn about where this is going down by a quick stop at Wikipedia. Birmingham, Alabama is a city in the north central region of the U.S. state of Alabama with an estimated population of over 209,000 people. It is the most populous city in Alabama. And I believe that could be a saving grace in this case. We have a lot of people out there. Um, this is a disappearance that seemingly happens early morning hours, but certainly when there's people out and about possibly heading to work or heading to other functions, I think we just have to get the right questions out there. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm a little concerned because I don't know if law enforcement is giving us the right information to get those right questions out there, but we're going to, to do our best in terms of what they have shared with media so far. Stopping over at news1.com, let's get into some details. This was written on May 30th, 2014. Alabama mother of two missing after meeting man she had been speaking with on phone for a month. And I've heard some variations on this story. Um, some of her family members are saying, she actually knew this person. I believe she worked in restaurants. Um, so it might have been more of a face-to-face -face relationship with this man, uh, but a casual relationship. The, definitely nothing serious, no dating or anything of that nature going on. And it's kind of like her disappearance is under the guise of um, almost you know, just being a good friend or trying to develop a relationship with someone uh, in, in terms of just a friendly relationship. He apparently needed some help um, with children's hair, getting their hair braided. Uh, she had mentioned she was a mother. She knew how to do that. She was willing to help him with that. And in return, he was going to help get the brakes fixed on her car. So that's kind of the short version of the story. We'll get into more details here, but let's go for the critical information. Um, case type, they have it listed as endangered here on News One. Uh, for date of birth, they actually have this incorrect. I think they didn't know it, but it's April 15th, 1991. She goes missing on April 24th, 2014 uh, at the age of 23, newly turned 23, only 23 for a couple weeks. Um, missing from Birmingham, Alabama, a black female with medium complexion standing at five foot three inches tall, weighing 145 pounds. Hair color is black. Hair length is medium. Eye color is brown. Does not wear contacts or glasses last seen on the 700 block of third avenue west around 9 a.m and of course we will get to a map on that at some point soon but i just wanted to check here in her hair um it looks like she has some some parts that are blonde woven into it so uh there might be some additional colors going on with her hair i just wanted to point that out it kind of stuck out to me when i read through it this time Stubbs, a mother of two kids aged one and four went missing after her family says she went to meet a man at a gas station who was supposed to give her money to get the brakes on her car fixed. Uh, and I believe that recent video, the video that we started this episode with that showed her kids, that was published in March of 2019. So of course they are five years older at this point, uh, approximately six and nine. 
Stubbs's brother drove her to a Boost Mobile store and waited in his car across the street to monitor the situation. The man drove up and the pair pulled off in the car. Stubbs hasn't been seen since. My grandson said she got in the car with him, said Stubbs' grandmother, Aura Stubbs. Next thing you know, they left. That was April 24th. Now, I've seen so many versions of this story, and they all keep saying that it's a Boost Mobile store. It's a Boost Mobile store. I actually believe it's a T-Mobile store that is right next to Boost. I mean, they're almost practically the same store, but there is a wall that divides them, and they do have separate entrances. I'll share with you guys the information of why I think it's actually the T-Mobile store and not the Boost, but just know that we're going to see Boost Mobile throughout this whole thing. Also, just wanted to give a really big shout out to the family members. They've done a really good job of trying to raise awareness to this case, being available for comments and interviews across all these different articles that we're looking at today. Um, her grandmother in particular, Aura, uh, has said a lot in these as well. Um, and that's such a big component to helping with these cases, just getting the exposure so that people out there know that they're looking for someone that is indeed missing. When family cooperates like that, it can really help raise that exposure. Jumping over to abc3340.com, a month after 23-year-old Kiara Stubbs' disappearance, her family is pleading for the public's help. Birmingham police tell ABC 3340, the man is considered a person of interest and has been interviewed. Um... I just I was really shocked when I bumped into this information and especially so early on. So the person I believe the person that actually picked her up, um, first of all, it probably would have been easy to track him down if she was talking to him over the phone as the early articles suggested. Uh, that's a simple record search and they could have tracked down who she was talking to. I've seen an interview, I believe with her grandmother where her grandmother actually states that um, they were able to track this guy down sometime around 1030 that morning and she goes missing. Uh, I think the camera actually says it's like 8-11 or so when she gets into his vehicle. So you're talking a, a window of only a few hours before the family is able to kind of track this guy down. Now, there's other strange details that come out there. Uh, you know, Kiara's brother was on the scene waiting in his car. She essentially went into the cell phone store. Once again, I think it was a T-Mobile store. Uh, she hung out in there for a little bit. The other car pulls up, and we have footage of the car pulling up. We're going to watch here in a moment. She gets in the car and takes off. According to her grandmother, her, uh, her brother actually gives chase at that point. He follows the car in his car but is not able to keep up with it uh, because it turns into a high-speed event. And uh, actually, now that I think about it, it's the detective that shared that information on a recent interview, part of that same video clip we started this with. Uh, in the description box below, I'll be sure to have that video clip right at the top of the sources section. So you can go ahead and click on that. Um, if you're interested in this case, I highly, highly recommend that you watch that video clip. There's some interesting detail in there. Also, a few interesting questions that are raised that we'll get to by the end of this. But one of the questions for me right off the bat is, you guys talk to this guy, you consider him a person of interest, but here we are five years later and we still haven't had movement on this case. What's the real sticking point here? Something else, uh, which is kind of interesting because this story is so wrapped around the thought of cell phones. In the footage, we're going to see that Kiara has her cell phone with her. I have seen nothing in terms of investigative analysis about her cell phone. Uh, did they pull the ping trail on it? Could they see where she went? Did she have location services enabled? Could someone log in if she had a Gmail account and possibly use her location services to see where she had gone after she went into the car? It would also be telling just to know, was her phone shut off a minute after she got into the car? Or was it an hour later or two hours later? None of those details are being released through media channels. And once again, those are the kind of details I think that can sometimes help us in terms of understanding the time frame that's going on here, also the risk that's going on here. You know, if she steps into that car and two minutes later her phone shut off, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling like that puts this, this missing person's case in a bit of a different category than thinking, oh, she just jumped in a car with someone and maybe she took off to go start a, a new life. It's just very, it's odd to me. And there are comments from the initial investigator on this case where he's being pretty clear that he thinks that there might be a foul play situation going on here very early on in this investigation. But once again, we're not getting any real details or questions that we can help answer for them to lead them to the next point. If they know this 
who this guy is, if they've already talked to this guy, we need the detail to then follow that up. Um, part of this guy's story is that he dropped her back off. Okay, then maybe police could release the details about where he supposedly dropped her back off so that we can see if anyone can confirm that that happened. I would like to think that they check that location for footage from security cameras to help corroborate his story about actually dropping her off. If they did check and they didn't have that, why they couldn't roll that into some type of search warrant, I have no idea. I think I've seen search warrants written with, with similar conditions. I wouldn't say much less than that, um, but certainly similar conditions. So let's go ahead and continue with the article here, but already very big questions in this case. Still, the family has no answers. Hundreds of flyers with Stubbs's picture are posted throughout Ensley, Wylam, Fairfield, and other areas. Stubbs was last seen in a Burgundy Chrysler 200, and I believe it's a 2012 model. Over at WBRC from October 8th, 2014, Birmingham police have released surveillance video of a woman the day she disappeared in hope of generating new leads in her case. Stubbs's family has seen the video and believe the man she's seen leaving with in that video has her or knows where she is. This is a nightmare or a Stubbs, Stubbs's grandmother said. All we got is she got in his car and has not been seen. Birmingham police said they questioned the man. He told investigators he dropped Stubbs off in the same area. So once again, I'm just going to put the question back out there. If And especially if it's in the same area. Is it literally in front of the cell phone store again? Because then you wouldn't even have to search far. You are, you've already got the tape for that one camera. Run it an hour forward or however later he says this was and see if she shows back up at that location. Um, I kind of doubt they're going to find that, but it's interesting to see that there's no comment about that, that they've actually looked for footage and can't you know, corroborate his story. Stubbs' mother wants more to be done. Birmingham Police Chief A.C. Roper said this case is very concerning since Stubbs has been missing for six months. Someone out there knows what happened to her, where she might be, Roper said. She loves her children. She would never leave this family. She would never take us through this, said her grandmother, Aura Stubbs. So let's take a look at this footage for ourselves. And once again, I'm just kind of put, going to put the question to you before we start rolling it. Is how helpful is this footage? I, I admit releasing footage is always good for once again re-raising exposure, but is there anything that we can really learn from this that can help? Uh, is it just a matter of trying to jostle someone's memory out there that might remember this scene, might remember seeing this young woman stepping towards the car, speaking to the driver, stepping around the front of it, and I believe she gets in the passenger seat. You can see just a little bit of light and movement as she steps, uh, sits in the passenger seat there. And then the car backs up out of frame. Now, something else to notice about this footage is um, it's got a pretty solid tint job on the rear windows, especially. I'm just a little concerned about the possibility that there might have been someone else in the vehicle. I would think that when she went up to the side and was speaking to the driver that she might have been able to see in enough, but you know, it doesn't look like she's really kind of looking into the car when she's up speaking to the driver. As a matter of fact, it looks like she's looking around a little bit, maybe trying to see where her brother's waiting. Um, according to reports I've seen, he's supposedly across the street watching this happen. Now, another interesting thing about this area is um, there is an auto parts store that's kind of in this same center, but they're not really meeting up there either. So this whole thing about the brakes, I'm wondering if that story is accurate or not as well. I don't know where the source of that information is. I just know that we're hearing it from the family in several interviews, but it's kind of interesting. There's literally an auto parts store um, just a further out of frame here and it's not like they're going in there together to buy parts and then he's going to drive to where her car is to help her or something along those lines. Um, she's hanging out in a cell phone store and then she goes outside and jumps in this guy's car. To another article at ABC 3340 from December 8th, 2015. So we're now moving 
more than a year forward. Uh, and this is just a quick shot of Detective Rodney Rogers. Um, I believe he was the first detective assigned to it. And we're going to hear a clip from him later. He's also the one that noted he thought that there was a foul play situation going on here. The Stubbs family is getting ready to live through a second holiday without a 23-year-old woman who disappeared in April of last year. Police believe someone took Kiara Stubbs. It's hard to lay down at night and not know where your child is. It's very hard. I know someone knows something, said Kiara's mother, Lakeisha Stubbs. We know some foul play is involved in this case. We are not going to stop until we get a resolution, find out what happened, and return Miss Stubbs to her family, said Birmingham Detective Rodney Rogers. So that's a pretty clear statement here. And once again, I'm just wondering where's where's the information that will help lead us to the questions that we can really ask the public. You know, it, it's interesting because in all these articles, it really just boils down to: Have you seen this car? And uh, do you know where this car went on that particular day? Um, it's it's not very strong in terms of trying to elicit information from the general public. Kiara Stubbs' kids are two and six years old. Uh, as of when this is written. The Stubbs family believes they know who took Kiara. Police need your help to make sure before they can make an arrest. Crime Stoppers investigators are looking for the owner of a Burgundy Chrysler 200 with tinted windows. Um, I'm even surprised at how that's phrased because considering this comes out uh, a year and a half after her disappearance um, and with all the comments early on that police had already interviewed the person of interest, I don't know if this is just the writer got this wrong and didn't understand that they had already interviewed the owner or if it's if he wasn't the owner, if the guy driving the car literally wasn't the owner of the car that he was driving. Um, there might be a second person involved here. And once again, that's just why I wanted to throw out that question about the tinted windows. Could there have been someone else in the vehicle as well? April 27th, 2016, as you guys can see, the clock just keeps rolling on this case, and we're really not finding any new information or developments. 25-year-old Kiara Stubbs has been missing for two years. It's like she vanished off the face of the earth, just faded away, said Kiara's grandmother, Aura Stubbs. You have your good days, but more bad days. You're sleeping, and you don't know what, to, what kind of condition she's in. Is she dead or is she alive? This is so agonizing to have to live through this and not knowing where your loved one is and no one will come forward and tell us anything, said Stubbs. No arrests have been made in the case. Kara's family says someone made a statement to police just a few weeks ago. This is the only place where I see any mention of that statement and I have no idea uh, what the statement was, but obviously here we are three years after this is written and this case still isn't solved, so... I'm not sure how strong that statement was. It's like she just disappeared off the earth. April 14th, 2018. On that 2014 day, the Birmingham mother, along with one of her brothers and her son, dropped her younger sister and another brother off at school. Um, so interesting. We have a lot more people in the car than I originally imagined. And at the point where her brother is watching her from the vehicle, her son is also with the brother in his car. Uh, they headed to the city's Five Points West. That's the name of the shopping area where the cell phone store is. In my heart, I know he told her to get in the car with him, Shantae Stubbs said. I don't know if he told her they were going to an ATM to get the money or what. Kiara Stubbs' brother and son waited for her to return, but she never did. Repeated calls to her cell phone the rest of the day went unanswered. At that point in time, her aunt said, we knew something was wrong. Kiara Stubbs' children are now eight and five and live with their grandmother. They're very smart and they know the situation, her aunt said. They know mama's gone and they know someone took her. We don't hide anything from them. The missing woman worked at restaurants and was close to her family. She was a sweet, funny, loving person, she said. She loved her family. She loved her kids. That's all she wanted to do, work and spend time with her family. Shantae Stubbs said they heard multiple stories and theories, but none have panned out. The family is pleading with anyone with information to come forward, step in our shoes and understand how we feel knowing our loved one is gone. You wouldn't want to have no one missing for four whole years, Shantae Stubbs said. If there is anyone who knows anything, I feel like they need to step up. It's been too long. 
And I think this is a good point for me to echo that and let you guys know in the con I have contact information in the description box below uh, for the detective. I believe it even includes his personal cell phone. But outside of that, if you need to remain anonymous for some reason, if there's something about this case that is a risk to you personally, you can do that. There is a contact number for Crime Stoppers down below as well. So what about this man? Is there anything else that we can learn about this guy? Obviously, police are not releasing his identity, but we can learn a little more over at the Charlie Project. The man Stubbs met on the day of her disappearance was an African-American man in his 50s, someone she knew only by sight. He had met her at her job, and she offered to help him braid his children's hair in exchange for help with her breaks. So thankfully, uh, as part of this CBS 42 segment, the same segment where I got the video clip that started this whole episode from, they went back to Boost Mobile, or to, see now I'm doing it, uh, to T-Mobile, and got the security footage for themselves. And they're showing us some stuff that we haven't seen in the other footage. And first of all, the quality is much better. Um, we can see actually inside the store. And we see her, of course, walk out to the vehicle as well. Um, so let's just roll through this one more time as she walks in pretty normal. She's literally on the phone, but here's one of the reasons why I can tell you it's actually not the boost mobile. If we take a look at a street view, you can see the boost mobiles here on the right, the T mobiles here on the left. Notice the configuration of the windows and the door. And once we go back to the footage, the door is here, the windows are here, and she's inside. So that actually puts her in the T-Mobile side, not in the Boost Mobile side, unless they've reversed the footage for some reason, which I don't think they have, but um, I can't really see enough text to confirm if this isn't a mirror image for some reason. Um, but I've also kind of checked, uh, you know, there's a little mat that's here, and you can see her foot kind of crosses very close to this side of the blue parking spot for the handicap parking. Um, I'm fairly confident that she's actually going into the T-Mobile side of the store there. But anything else in here? They just talk about that she seems pretty relaxed. She talks to the person that works there. She's on the phone again, a lot of phone use. Um, so I'm telling you guys, in terms of tracking her information on the cell phone, I'm really surprised why we haven't heard of some development there. Uh, here we have a much better shot of the Chrysler 200 pulling up. They mentioned that it looks like she even looks like she's kind of joking and laughing with the clerk inside the store at one point. Sure seems like she is not aware of any potential risk. So just to give you guys a little bit of an overview of where this is going on, this is on 3rd Ave close to Princeton Parkway. This is where the vehicle leaves. We've got a lot of homes. We've got a lot of businesses. There are a lot of people around this area. And I truly believe someone out there saw something on this day. They just need their memory jostled a little bit, or maybe they need to be enticed to call it in. Um, so please do the right thing. Please help this family. It's been five years and they're looking for answers. And maybe there's something you can do to help them with that. Now, in a real interesting turn, I haven't seen this happen too much before, but uh, CBS 42, who I believe is the same organization that actually put this YouTube clip together, which is a really good segment, but unfortunately it's only been viewed like 68 times. That's part of the reason why I wanted to do additional coverage here on YouTube about this case. Um, but they had a written article that they put up also, but then it's been deleted and I don't know why. Um, I was able to find a cached version of it in Google, so I'm going to share the details with you here. There's one comment in it in particular that it's just, it's not a great comment, and it's from the current investigator on there, and I'm wondering if that prompted law enforcement to ask them to remove this. Um, but let's go through the details here. This is an article that was originally written March 26, 2019. I don't know when it was pulled um, off the internet, but... It's uh, hard to find unless you're look, looking at a Google cache of it. The disappearance of Kiara Stubbs has become a cold case. I didn't know him personally, but Kira knew him from coming up to her job, Kira's grandmother, Ora Stubbs, said. From what Kiara said, he seemed like a nice person, and he needed someone to help his kids' hair and stuff, and she was like, yeah, I got a daughter, I can do their hair. He seemed nice at the time. 
Although Kiera Stubbs knew the man, her grandmother said, he wasn't a boyfriend or nothing like that. It's just somebody she thought was an older guy who was nice. She was helping him and he would return the favor by doing her car. And she went with him to meet him that day. Birmingham police said that man is a person of interest. Basically, they've been saying that from the start. But Detective Rodney Rogers, who is one of the original investigators in Kiera Stubbs' disappearance, said they have not publicly released the person of interest's name. Rogers said, that's mainly because she got into this car with this person only. So it's no witnesses to say what happened in the car, where did they go or anything like that. So that's why we need the public to go back to that day and see if they remember anything or saw anything, saw them go anywhere, something that could give us a lead or somewhere to start. Now, I just want to point out, um, I don't know for a fact that there's no one else in the car. I'm curious why that's his assumption or presumption. If it's coming because of them actually interviewing the driver and the driver saying no one else was in there with him, I don't think we should be taking that at face value, especially in a case like this. But outside of that, he's talking about the fact that there is really no way to know where they went or anything like that. Actually, there is. If they're able to trace her phone, as long as it's on, they might be able to tell. The other thing is if they can get a warrant for his phone, they could then run a trace on that also and see if they could determine the direction. Did their phone stay together? Um, did hers shut off at some point, but then they could still see his and potentially where he went. So um, it's, it's once again, and maybe they've tried this and they're just not being public about it. I'm just telling you guys uh, where I'm seeing, at least in terms of the public information, there's a gap in this investigation with that, with that cell phone information. The status of the investigation has been a source of frustration for the family of Kiara Stubbs. I just wish the police were more involved from the start. If they had been more involved from the start, we might have gotten some answers and some closure. How can you all just sweep this under the rug? Um, I certainly understand, especially with how the case is being presented through the media, why, would they, why they might feel like um, the investigators aren't doing everything in their power, let's say. Um, but I do just want to remind everyone out there that there is a lot more work than goes on in terms of what's released through the media and publicly. Uh, I'm just here asking the questions about aren't there other nuggets that they can release to help elicit the tips that they're actually looking for? Because right now, you're asking the public to rewind their memories five years to a car, a burgundy car, a maroon 2012 uh, Chrysler 200. And that's a bit of, of a hard thing to ask the public, I think. I think if there was something more specific, you know, we know they were around this particular area. Um, did, did anyone happen to see this? Or did you live in that area at that time? Could, could you possibly have some information for them? Um, we're just, we're not getting, we're not getting great questions to be able to help the police with. And it's, it's a little frustrating when you're looking at a case like this and thinking of two children that are missing their mother. Detective Rodney Rogers, who is no longer investigating this case, said, we haven't forgotten. The Birmingham Police Department has, is, has still been working on the case. We are still trying to get new leads. I just want to let them know we are still looking at, even though I'm not working on the case, our cold case detective is very capable. He's looking at it, and we're not going to stop until we get some closure. Homicide detective Jonathan Ross just got the case a few months ago as a cold case. Uh, let me just say one thing. I think is a benefit to this case is we now have a homicide detective looking at this because um, if we do think that this is truly a foul play situation, this is a person that should be used to investigating cases like that. So I think that's a strong point. But then we get this comment from him. He said, I have to have a lot of patience at this point, and I know it's tough on the family to wait this long or even longer. But my job is just to sit back and wait until someone notifies me either by phone or come into the headquarters or talk to or hitting us on Facebook or going through Crime Stoppers. It doesn't matter as long as I can get that input from somebody because somebody saw something. They may not remember it that particular day, but since we're airing it again, it may jog their memory and that could help us on this case, especially for the family. So I think it's just a badly worded statement. Um, I imagine a statement like this could really upset the family. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm struggling with it, and I'm just really focused on, but my job is just to sit back and wait. 
I don't think any family member that has a missing loved one wants to hear the active detective on the case say that. And once again, I'm just wondering, isn't there more that they could do? Is there some analysis they could do with the cell phones to help move this thing forward? Um, can they dig into this guy's life a little bit, see if he has known associates, maybe someone that could have been in the backseat of that car when this is going on? Are any of those people connected to possibly trafficking or some of the other reasons that we see for abductions of this nature? Um, it just it's it sounds really strange. It's just a really bad quote, and I have a feeling that's the quote that probably got this um, got this removed from the actual CBS website. My job is just to sit back and wait until someone notifies me. Um, I, I honestly think that he's um, he's trying to do the right thing here. Like I said, I think a hom homicide detective is the way to go with this. He's working cold cases. I get all that. Uh, I, I just think when you're presenting this information publicly, you want to make it sound like it's more assertive and active than than that. Kiara Stubbs was last seen heading towards Bessemer on the 3rd Avenue West near Princeton Parkway. Detective Rodney Rogers said, the public can help us by remembering that day. If they saw Miss Stubbs, she got in a Burgundy Chrysler 200. If anyone remembers her with a black gentleman, older, possibly in his 50s, if anyone remembers seeing them together, that would help us out. Now, in what already kind of feels like one stumble um, with that comment, uh, we actually have another very important question that's put to Detective Rodney Rogers. Uh, and I want to share that with you guys here right now. Have you ever worked on a, a case like this before, a missing persons case that turns up nothing? No, I haven't. Uh... Actually, uh, I haven't worked on any, any missing person cases. This is actually one of my first, is my first missing person case, actually. So it's the same news organization, and effectively, their video piece also has a comment that family does family members wouldn't want to hear. On top of the written piece that looks like was pulled from the website, having a separate comment about the new guy that's on the case. So the first guy that was on the case, it was his first missing persons case, and. Don't get me wrong, everyone has to have their first case. I totally understand that. Uh, it would have been great to follow that up with, you know, hey, we've reached out to other agencies to try to pull some experience in on this and we've consulted with them. I haven't heard anything about other agencies being consulted in this in any way at state level or even asking possibly the FBI for some assistance in this, particularly with the cell phone tracking stuff. Um, so it's just, I don't know. It's it's one of those tough things because a lot of these police departments, we, we talk about this on the channel every now and then, they're, they're too small to have public information officers and people that are really media savvy and able to take questions like that and make sure they don't turn into these kind of heavy clunking answers like they do in this case in particular. But it's no surprise to me that the family is so concerned about this case with these types of comments floating around there. And kind of, you know, questioning how helpful law enforcement is being in a case like this when, you know, you hear it's the first missing persons case for the investigator that was originally assigned on it. You hear the current investigator says, you know, say that he just needs to sit back and, and wait for his phone to ring, essentially. Um, really, really tough. And I really, really feel for the family on this. And that's a big part of the reason why I knew I had to do some coverage on this case and try to re-raise exposure and try to get more than 68 views on YouTube for that segment and give another beacon of light to this case on YouTube as well. Um, please help me out with this Brain Scratchers. If you have friends that live in Alabama, share this video with them. We need to raise exposure to this case. We need everyone out there looking for the mother of these two beautiful children, Kiara Stubbs. So in the description box and the sources down below, you will also find a link to a Facebook group for Team Kiara Stubbs. It is a closed private group. I don't know what's in there. I can just tell you that it looks like they haven't had any updates in the past month. Um, but if you want to get more active with this case, please join that group. There is also a web sleuths thread. It is only a few pages long, um, but some more information that you can dig into there. Most surprisingly, and this was probably the main reason why I wanted to cover this case today, uh, Kiera's case is not listed in NamUs. We can see here that I've got a search just on the first name Kiera. I'm not drilling down to state, not drilling down to anything else. I didn't even put sex in there. Anyone named Kiara, I wanted to see how many missing persons cases there were. There are two. 
and neither of them is this particular case. On top of that, I ran an unidentified persons search, uh, drilled it in for the state of Alabama, looking for a female that is African American. It only came back with five hits. None of the hits seem to be right. First of all, four of them are too early um, compared to her disappearance. And then the one that actually fits in in terms of the dates there, the age of the person that was found looks to be, be between three and seven years old, far too young to be Kiara. But it is so important that she does get entered into NamUs because if an unidentified body does pop up in there, um, there's no record to match it to if it is her. So I'm going to try to get her enter, entered into NamUs. Um, we'll see if that gets approved. I don't know if there's some reason why law enforcement uh, might be blocking that entry from going through. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't enter her them themselves. Uh, I have a mother of a missing person. You guys might remember the Cody Turner case. She's been talking to me about trying to rally some people to help drive through laws for um, making NamUs mandatory. And I believe we do have this in two states currently. There are several other states where it's being proposed. Um, but she's looking for helpers on that. I'm talking to her and we're trying to figure out some mechanics for how to do that, how to make it easy for us to maybe get a few volunteers in every state to send a letter into their state representative and see if we can nudge this forward. Um, it's a really important component to these cases, particularly because we have these silos of information from state to state to state. If that record's just sitting in a police department locally, and then we have an unidentified body that's found maybe a state away, the odds of that being matched up are extremely low. But if they're in a centralized system like NamUs, where there's automated processes looking for that and finding matches and notifying their staff and their staff is going through them, we have just a way, way better chance of making those matches. So uh, I'll be working on getting Kiara added to NamUs today. So what do you guys think is going on in this case? Um, I'm really concerned because of the dynamics of what's going on here, her getting into someone's car, admittedly not a, a total stranger, but not someone she was all that familiar with. She must have had some heads up that, um, you know, because her brother stayed there in the car and kind of watched from across the street. So it, that kind of tells me that she might have been a little nervous about whatever was happening, this meetup already. Um, I'd be very curious to see some comments from him about what happened that day. I haven't ran into any information from him in any of these publications. Um, but I'm really concerned that there might have been someone else in the car, really concerned about where that car could have gone from there. And I'm very, very curious about the information from her phone and how come none of that has been made available. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. What about you? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. Before we end today's episode, I have several people to thank. Um, and once again, I just have to give a huge, huge thank you to all of my patrons and PayPal supporters. Uh, YouTube, the demonetization thing is really coming to a head. A bunch of the true crime community is being hit by it. Um, there's this big list that's been floating around with all these words that are supposedly triggering it. I can tell you, you can't have an adult conversation without being able to use those words. So, uh, I don't know when or if things are going to get better, but I really appreciate you guys stepping up and helping because, um, if, if I can't make money on YouTube, I have to make money on something. And Patreon seems to be the answer for that issue right now. So a big thank you to Billy McDonald. Melissa Palmiera, Danielle Duffield, Amber Dish, Kaylee Matthews, and Bella Bernice. Uh, they are all new patrons. And on top of that, I had several that increased pledges. Lisa Orth, Joanne Hamilton, Colleen, and Paul Noland, all increasing their pledges, helping to keep me here doing what I love doing, trying to help families in these really tough situations. My heart, once again, goes out to Kira's family, and I really hope law enforcement can get the right questions to us. I think they're right. The answer lies with the public. I just don't know the right questions to ask the public to get those tips back into them. Hopefully, you spending time with me on this video here today helped some of those questions percolate, and if you're the person that has the right answer to one of those questions, once again, please call that in. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful 4th of July, and I'll be back here on Monday with a brand new episode of Three Men and a Mystery, where we actually have 
one of the defense attorneys for Coley McCraney being interviewed on the show. You don't want to miss that. Take care, everyone. I'll see you then. <laughs>